down today for uh, stocks that were down. Uh, one is uh, Gilead. It was off two percent. I want to bring in Anjali Kamlani. Anjali, I thought that was kind of uh, interesting. Gilead uh, here uh, in the red on a day when the market ended higher, and also this news coming out of Gilead on Remdesivir, an inhalable, uh, so a trial for that drug that led to a lot of excitement in this market. So that I guess could mean that you know, people could get it without having to go on an IV and possibly you know, have to go to the hospital. Uh, is this some sort of a breakthrough uh, for these numbers, which have just been really uh, dire the last few days? Well, I know that in the recent past, I think the enthusiasm around Gilead has sort of waned a little bit. If you look at, uh, you know, number one, the results of that trial, number uh, of the trial of remdesivir, and number two, if you're looking at sort of uh, what is what else is out there on the market, and also sort of the hopes that are pinned on a vaccine. So you see a lot more uh, sort of energy around the vaccine uh, companies nowadays, and so I think that that all plays a role. We also know that the results were sort of moderate from remdesivir initially. And so uh, while the inhalable version is definitely a really big step when you're talking about who can use it and who it would be available to, that is something to look forward to. Um, I know that uh, overseas, there's some uh, prices being set for some uh, makers, uh, you know, because it licensed uh, the remdesivir out to other companies to produce. Uh, there are price ranges, you know, in the 20, 30 to uh, 50 range. Meanwhile, over here, we had reports that could be as high as 4,500, even though nothing has been set just yet. So this is all, you know, just laying out some factors uh, don't know specifically what went into uh, today's, uh, you know, action, but that that definitely is uh, one of the things is that we've seen increasingly more focus on uh, vaccines as there hasn't really been any major breakthrough when it comes to the treatment space. And just Anjali, on the uh, overall uh, numbers and sort of the update from uh, today, uh, just to, to get the, the latest from you there as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we know that uh, globally, we're actually nearing 9 million right now. Uh, the last I checked, it was 8.9 million cases globally, and more than 400, almost 470,000 deaths. And so that's a really high number. And, and it goes back to, again, what the World Health Organization is saying, which is that we're really seeing an astronomical growth in these numbers of infected cases. But one thing to note um, is that deaths, especially in the U.S., have decreased. We've seen some trends uh, coming out of Florida. Florida, where the average age of an infected person is actually reducing. And so that could explain sort of that slower death rate that we've seen. So uh, in the U.S., those numbers, uh, two point, almost 2.3 million uh, cases. Meanwhile, deaths at 120,000. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.